You know, it's been 13 years since the Portland Trailblazers last appeared in the Western Conference Final. Now, make no mistake about it, they've had plenty of talent here the past few years, but it took the arrival this season of one Charles Linwood Williams to help put it all together. Andrea Joyce shows exactly why the Portland Trailblazers saw Buck Williams as what they needed. This season has been a coming out party for Buck Williams. After eight frustrating years with the Nets, Williams is now in the world of contenders. It brings back that that new life, that, that excitement about the game that I sort of lost the last two or three uh, years in New Jersey. So it, it really uh, has done uh, tremendous things for me as far as that different attitude, a different mindset, a different approach to the game. The Trailblazers are reborn as well. They needed physical toughness and got it from Williams, the tireless player. They needed team unity and got it from Williams, the unselfish man. He does a lot of dirty work, and every team, every good team, great team, has a player like that who's willing to sacrifice part of his game for the better of the ball club. And sometimes fans don't like him because he plays so hard and so competitive, but he's one of the nicest guys, I believe, in the league. I think the players really respected that. I didn't try to come here and take over. I just tried to come here and blend in with the rest of the players. That blend of humility and hard work grew out of a small-town upbringing in North Carolina. People in Rocky Mount who knew Buck while he was growing up always figured he'd turn out to be a quiet, dignified leader in any profession he chose. But nobody ever expected that profession to be the NBA. Especially back in the days when Buck was outplayed by his sister. I think I was a little better than he was. And he being my younger brother, he would not like to see his older sister outdo him. So I think it was a motivational tool that way. I knew she was going to say that. But you lost every game, Cynthia. <laughs> but Buck was not the best player in town. Even though he didn't start playing till the ninth grade, the famous Williams determination soon took over. You could see that fierce competitiveness in his eyes. Um, would go for every loose ball, didn't mind getting on the floor, and felt that if a, if a rebound would come off, he could get it. He wasn't real flashy, but he got the job done. You know, he was our leader, our center. He never, you know, like floated from the free throw, or was a real high jumper. His dunks wasn't even pretty to me, but he got the job done. Buck's job now takes him far away from his old neighborhood playground. But Rocky Mount's blue-collar all-star will always be close to his past. Coming from the kind of family that I, that I came from, that was really a, a major uh, issue in our family. You work very hard and good things happen to you. You could not find a nicer person, a more dedicated person, a true friend. With the Blazers' success, there isn't much time for hobbies these days. But it's nice to know, no matter what happens in the playoffs, Buck Williams will never change. He'll always be playing the same old tune. It takes a mass amount of energy be, to, you know, to be nice to people. I think you really have to work very hard to be a pretty bad person. And uh, this is me. And what you see is what you get. And, and this is Buck Williams. Well, unattractive dunks or not, our own Lynn Elmore, who played with Buck Williams with the New Jersey Nets, said he would be hard-pressed to find anyone in the NBA who would have a bad word to say about Buck Williams.